All right, I think this is on. Is this thing on? All right, cool. Um, I really hate that I, uh, well, I guess I could use music, right? How do I get it to, so YouTube has this thing called YouTube Studio, and it's stuff that they license, audio that they license to you. Uh, browse and download music free of cost for your project. You can use these in any of your videos. You can search the audio catalog. New audio tracks are added every month, but you can't select and make playlists, I guess. So what should I listen to today? Uh, let's see, how do I get, how do I do this, right? So is there a way, let's see. I guess, is there an app audio thing? Maybe there's an app audio. So what I'm talking about is this. So this was the music source from uh, something that like that's built into Streamlabs. So I think I can maybe add a source. Uh, would it hurt them to categorize these things? Image, window capture, audio output capture. Application audio capture. Sure, it says beta. What could go wrong, right? What is spout to? Oh, V2. Virtual avatar capture source enables high resolution, zero compression, and zero latency video capture from V2. I don't know what that is. I guess that's like when you're not. It's an avatar, I guess. Uh, all right, so let's see. Oh, it would be fun to do a collab one day. That'd be kind of cool. Okay, audio capture. And let's just call this um, Edge Music. Add source. Oh. Okay, all right. So I say, uh, so let's bring this up. Where is this? Audio library. So we want audio library and all right, I want it on monitor and output. And the previous music went to, this is the stream. Track one is the stream, track four is the music track. So I wanted to go to the stream so you guys don't get bored of hearing me drone on. Um, and then what is the sync offset? Time it takes between sound occurring and being broadcast. What did I have here for music? Oh, look at all these other options I have here. What makes this one so different than edge music, I guess? I don't know. I don't know. So let's add this guy. Did this like add it? Did it just like open it? Edge music. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Um... A hard speed to the city streets. We began to feel the fire. monitor and output, but I don't want it to output there. So I wonder if this like, works by like, clicking that it's loud.
Did that work? Oh, you've... Okay, But that doesn't solve this problem of why it's doing this, right? Um, and I don't want to listen to that either. Like, come on, folks. Oh, you can search attribution not required because that's a pain in the ass. Uh, genre. Let's try dance electronica. Let's try. I mean, I just want like background music. Is that too much to ask for? All right, I guess this will work, but still doesn't answer the problem as to why. So is it not like going anywhere? I don't understand. So that's here, desktop audio, edge music. Enabling monitor sends output through here. So if I then, oh, it just mirrors it. It doesn't actually capture and like redirect, it just mirrors. And it totally I mean, is this just not capturing? I don't know. <sighs> so if I were to do And then I could send this to the monitor. Is it like really loud? I can't tell if it's loud. Um, I guess... I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, so I got the chat stuff loaded out, loaded up, and... Let's see. So I got that. Music is here, but I feel like this is too loud. So, like, just redirect. 
and oh monitor what I don't know what this means enabling monitor sends audio through desktop audio so monitor off use device time sense device all right so if I were then to go oh I wish I didn't delete that oh wait it's here music so how was this set up So this doesn't this isn't tied to a device because the stream came from elsewhere. <sighs> so output is to the track. Output is to the track and monitor is to my headset. And this is not going to my headset because it's desktop audio. And the default device. I wonder if I were to do that nope so i guess my only option here is to just do this but i still don't know how it comes across there so you know what let's see let's see uh youtube uh live and Uh, I'm going to cast this to the TV, office TV, because I don't want to mess with my sound here. Doo -doo -doo. The TV's turning on. I really should set up a second camera. All right, so let's see. Uh... This is the crappy way through the Chromecast or through, uh, yeah, through Chromecast directly versus going here and then going straight to the TV via the YouTube app on the TV, uh, office TV, right? Office as speakers, TV office. There we go. Allow to give it permission. And let's see how this goes. Um, where's this music? Did it just stop? Did the music stop? Nope, here we go. All right. All right, so let's unmute the output here okay it's not coming out why is this not coming out did I, did I break this so desktop audio it's coming monitor and output Oh, now it's playing in my ear. Is it in my ear? I can't even tell. This is so, like, bizarre. Okay, so. Okay, so now this is in... Now, if I mute this, what happens? All the sound is going to... Oh, this sucks. Is it actually going? Yeah, I don't... I don't hear it. But it is, okay, so I mute it. I guess that's like a physical speaker mute. I hear it in the monitor. It's supposed to go to the output. Let's try and put this on track four. Monitor and output. Global settings.
where is the music? I don't, I don't get it. Is audio just like not, not flowing? All right, I guess y'all don't need this maybe. I don't know. No idea. All right, I'm done playing with this here. All right, turn off the TV. Let's, let's do this. Well, I'll keep music playing. And you know what? Since it's not going anywhere to anybody, um, I can listen to whatever I want then. Right? So I will uh, disable. So now that I can listen to whatever I want and not send the output out, like, that's great. So I can then take, I can turn off this crappy YouTube studio music. I can then change, let's try this source stuff again. Uh, by source and let's see, let's open up another edge tab and music.youtube.com. And now I can listen to what I want. Uh, yeah, let's do, oh wait, is this, I don't want, I don't want to mess this up here. So I'm going to actually turn off the desktop audio feed. So no stream track, just track three, going to go to headset and track three does not get streamed, I think. All right, so it should just be monitor only, mute output. And now uh, let's do Beat King and let's see if this works. So if I'm just not sending the output there, then I can just do, uh, wait, why do I even need to do anything here? This should actually just be All right, uh, and then I'm just gonna, so you can't hear it in the background. I gotta cover this, I don't want a copyright strike. Uh, open mixer, do, 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 Edge, 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 edge. Let's just send this to, Okay, I think this is working. All right. All right, so. Oh, yeah, all right. Now we can actually be productive. Now we can get some shit done. GSD, man. GSD. All right. So that killed 20 minutes of my life. That's 20 minutes I'll never get back. And, um, yeah, so let's talk about side quests. So this is the first the first uh, video in the series of side quests here. Um, what's a side quest, right? So side quest is uh, like from an RPG, and um, it's a task you have to do that is pretty much unrelated to your main objective like saving the princess or whatever. This is like helping somebody in the village find their cat, right? So what are we doing? So we were doing, um, we were working in MartinDB. So yesterday we did MartinDB with Wolverine. We successfully set up a service. Um, you can see that here in uh, part six. I think it was part six. I think it was part six. Uh, I think it was part six. So let's take a look. It's in the building infinity flow playlist. Um, yeah, so it's part six. So what we did in part six is we used Martin and um, we used Martin and Wolverine critter stack, right? And uh, we built an event source service 
and it took five hours, but we find, oh, it does show the Discord stuff. I didn't even know. That's pretty cool. It just doesn't show on the outputs. I've never actually like watched the final stream. That's really weird that it doesn't like show anything because I have no idea if that's happening. I guess, it, who knows? Anyway, so um, yeah, man. So so it took it took five hours um, to to get this finally working. And all we wanted to do is just count the number of times we saw a specific event and group it by tenant. Um, so what I've come to learn about Wolverine and Martin is that it's um it's really a great stack. Like they really did a great job building this thing. What are my gripes? Um, yeah, the documentation is all over, and there's a lot of like to be done, and it's not fully complete. Uh, but you know, volunteer works, right? Um, OSS. But one thing that does bother me is the lack of XML docs on uh, on the types, uh, on the methods, on the enum values. That drives me nuts. Like, is it that hard when you're building a thing to just put put a comment above it and put what it does? Because when you go search the docs, it's not there, and ain't nobody got time to read a ton of code. If I wanted to do that, I'd be writing this in Go uh, and dealing with Go docs. But yeah. So, all right, so what are you doing today? So our side quest is, all right, so best practice is we get uh, around um, database migrations. So Wolverine and Martin, the two different uh, main players here in, in the stack, in the critter stack, um, they, uh, they generate a ton of code on the fly they generate uh, and manage migrations automatically. They look at your database schema and they determine what you need to uh, be doing. And uh, and it goes ahead and applies those schema changes and does what it needs to. Yeah, so my problem with that is I have no idea what's being run. I have no idea what changes are gonna be made. And uh, I've had experiences in the past where like, how does this happen? Well, on startup, we're gonna check the schema. Well, what if I have this running uh, across multiple nodes, right? So every deployment, every time in an init container, for example, um, my app is going to start. It's going to try and do migrations. It's going to analyze the schema. And as the app grows, that schema is just going to get larger. And my guess is they're doing schema changes in transactions. Um, and I know they make them item potent, like that's good and everything. Um, but at the same time, if I have 15 init containers running at the same time, all checking the schema, in past applications, I've had issues where um, where that introduced contention um, and some locks um, around the schema and stuff, and it was just not a fun situation. Plus, I really don't need to check that 15 times or 20 times or however many nodes I have. Um, so I would actually prefer to have run once migrations and just generate the diffs and apply small chunks every update. Um, without the whole analysis phase, because that'll also help with a cold start period, uh, and because uh, eventually, you know, I think this is going to be running in a serverless fast place. Um, not sure yet, but still, faster startup means it's just better, right? We always can't argue with faster and less less unknown things happening in production environments, the better. So, um, to that to that end, um, they actually have here when you do the code generation. They actually say pre-building. So they're telling you that you can generate this code and it will actually store it somewhere. Um, so, and you can commit it and stuff like that or whatever, right? And it's there. So you can see what's going on. You see code gen right. Well, they have similar for, for databases, um, but they don't have a migration thing. Now, a couple of folks in the Discord for Martin and Critter Stack, um, they uh, they pointed me to some stuff, um, and I'm probably going to butcher their name here. Um, but let's let's show what they got. Uh, let's see, where is it? It is not that. That's not the link they sent me. Uh, all right. 
So this person, um, Anne, Anne Erdstyke, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, yeah, Anne or Anne, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, so they wrote about this here in the Martin docs, which, you know, I didn't see any DevOps uh, path here. So that makes me wonder where the heck are, where are these like topics here, right? Like, where is this? And what am I missing here? So let's just see if I can find it. What's the top the title is DevOps with Martin setting up a Docker file or setting up a Docker file, Docker file, setting up the database to use Docker. Yeah, where is this? Like, where is this? Um, so I want, that makes me curious. What am I missing here? So we've got DevOps documents, Postgres public scenarios. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. All right, anyway, let's go back to their article. That was a little loud. All right, um, so they wrote this guide. Uh, so they set up two projects, migration project, they add migration scripts, application project set up, Debug and testing, pushing Docker images, etc. All right, so this introduces uh, this thing. Eric Bra, great. I wonder if this is the same person. Let's see if there's a yeah. Okay, so what is this? What is great? The SQL script migration runner. So trim less. All right, so this is a .NET thing. So what is this? Uh, SQL scripts migration runner. Goal of great is to be largely backwards compatible with Roundhouse, Roundhousey, which is an amazing tool. It is initiated by the main maintainer of Roundhouse for the last three years. Let me see the issue for details. While early versions of great may not support every last feature, uh, what's a doco? Uh, going forward, uh, almost two years ago, I volunteered to uh, challenges in development for over 10 years. Time passing, some of the blah, 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 blah. Problematic dependencies. Originally used an internal Chuck Norris tool, but not maintained. Work around with build PS app bear, no automatic third party libraries. I don't understand why these would be problematic but okay lack of maintain oh here we go this is what it boils down to options going forward uh i have plans to upgrade five and six with the possibility of distributing binaries that are single file framework independent app get blah 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 i have a couple suggestions reboot abandon opinions oh that's sad it's always real sad when a open source maintainer hits this point um so yeah, that's sad. That upsets me. All right. So apparently they did a fork. Maybe is it a fork? Nope. Uh, full documentation. Great site. So okay, I don't need all this. You know, the conclusion I came to is this is yet another thing. And if you're in a tight environment, um, you can't necessarily just pick up and start running random binaries. Pull this here. Let's just pull this random image. Uh, and from Docker Hub, and uh, let's just run it in our production environment. That doesn't fly at a lot of places. So, if you're in one of those places, you know, and you're already using Martin and uh, Wolverine, which are if you're trying to generate SQL from the tooling, um, then um, yeah. So, if that's happening, then why can't we just have a simple run once migrator? that uh that uses martin right like nothing fancy just use it to generate code and i'm sorry not generate code um so use the tooling like martin and wolverine to 
to do their patches, right? To generate their diffs for schema changes, create a migration each time and just be done, right? Like, why can't that be a thing? Like, why? And then we have a separate binary uh, that is a separate binary for the migrations. Uh, there are embedded resources in them because um, when we build them, you know, it'll be in a binary. So I think I think the move here is. So I don't want to separate. I don't want to. I want to separate the migrations from the deployment, or not the deployment, but from the application runtime, right? Uh, I also do not want to necessarily couple the migration tool with, don't want to couple the migration tool with the, um, with the application, right? So how do you reuse that? So I'm thinking, let's, let's go do some MS Paint, right? Do, do, do. All right. So let's do some MS Paint. Um, so I'm thinking we have, oh, that's huge. So I'm thinking we have, and this will be our, um, whoa, that's huge. This is 0.11. This is only 160. OK, all right, I see our problem here. Um, let's go 100%. And let's. Let's resize our canvas here. All right. And um, let's resize canvas some more. What does this do? Yeah, there we go. So we're going to take this. We're going to delete. We're going to fill our bucket here with, oh, yeah, let's try something new. Let's try something new. Um, so this is a cool little blue. Um, all right. So oh, let's do rounded corners. Yeah. All right, so let's make this a little thicker. All right, so this is our app. And oh, that's too small now. So that's our app. And what, so that's our app. And our app will have our migration. So So our app has our SQL migration. Come on. It has SQL. Really? Every time I press space, it like stop. SQL. There we go. Migrations. Scripts. So we got that. Now there's another thing I want to support. Um, they're one offs. So basically, you have SQL migration scripts only for schema. Right, you should not be modifying data in in these systems with these scripts, right? Especially in a place where, well, you're freaking event sourcing. You shouldn't modify your log, a. But it's a complex system, and there's events that need to be raised as stuff changes, and you don't want to, um, you don't want to, um, you know, mess that up because you you lose an event. There's no way you're getting it back. You have to manually put that in there, and that, nobody wants to do it. Ain't nobody because. Martin is really compli complicated. There's like a million things going on. So no, right? So what does that mean? That means that for things we need to do, we create services for them and we, you know, uh, we trigger this compensating behavior to fix the problem um, by running code. You know, this might be uh, for each user I have, um, let's, uh, republish this message or something, right? For some reason, a, a bug got in there and we didn't publish the message when we were supposed to. I don't know. So uh, one off. So what we're talking about is just like SQL, we are running code. We're running .NET code to, we're running .NET code to, uh, to integrate or to interact with the production environment, with an environment, right? To do these things. Now, between the two, these things are ordered. Right. Uh, so these things are ordered. So you might have a number one, the initial, the first thing that needs to happen is the base SQL migration. So the complete database schema um, for the app. And then you've got 
maybe number two is some .NET code, arbitrary .NET code that has to run uh, to against the environment, the same environment that this stuff is going to by interacting with stuff. All right, so what do you do? All right, so so this is this is with the uh, let me put here uh, in parentheses um, .NET code. See, oh wow, that's messed up. I wonder why that is .NET code. Yeah, that's weird. And let's put that over here. All right. So, so this is this is what we have in the app. So this belongs to an app. Now, what happens now if I've got app A, app B? I have a bunch of these. Right? How do I do this? Yeah. Yeah, I got a bunch of these, dude. Right, so I've got a bunch of these. So how do I do this? How do I do this? Well, I then want to have. Oh, it's a cool color. I like the palette they chose for the new paint. So then we have the migrator, and the migrator is a standalone migrator, and. So this guy has his own table. So he has no knowledge of any of these apps. And I want to be able to take these scripts, take these one-offs, and actually just go like this. Let's see, how can I do this? Uh, let's do orange. And so let's see, will this, nope. It's supposed to be squiggly, right? Oh, yeah. What? All right. So we've got to go over here and then, oh, yeah. And we're going to then Yeah. Oh, no. All right, and so we got that going on, and now for good measure, we're just gonna draw an arrow here. Oh, that's ugly. That's ugly. Yes. So I'm just gonna go like this because I am not a good artist here. Yeah. All right, so what does this mean? Uh, we're gonna do So what does this do? So uh, app, no, I guess I could have just done that. Um, deliver <laughs> input to migrator. And uh, so that's input to migrator. Um, now, I think the best way to do this is to uh, how do we package it and send it? Well, let's just do a .NET assembly. Really? Via .NET. What is this? Like, what is happening here? Is there like a button stuff? Uh, via .NET assembly. And increase the size here so y'all can see at home and let's make this fancy uh yeah there we go there we go all right so what now um so this is what we want to do right so in our app we're gonna have these migrations and we're going to have um, the way to call the one-offs, right? We have the .NET code. And we are going to then build an assembly as part of the build process of the app. And that assembly will be a published asset, a published asset in uh, each, each build. And from there, 
we will package this standalone migrator, right? So what does he do? So this standalone migrator um, takes an input of the assembly. So a path or URL to the assembly, it will download it and then load it uh, into the process, uh, into the migrator and uh, look at the assembly and say, here's a list of migrations that are in here. And then it's also going to take in configuration. So let's write this down. I should probably write this down. So um, let's let's do this. So let's do the responsibility. Okay, now we're getting serious. Uh, so what we're going to do here, we're going to put this over here. Oh really? Uh, yeah. So responsibilities. Yeah, I love how they added spell check to this responsibilities. And they also added this co-creator AI thing, which is kind of cool. Um, so uh, let's change this to a little smaller. All right. So responsibilities, uh, downloads, downloads. Uh, oh, let's put this louder. Um, accepts and var uh, with URL to assembly and downloads it. Loads in memory, or loads, downloads and loads it. Downloads, loads, loads, and Oxford comma. Uh, downloads, loads, and um, interrogates uh, it for uh, migrations. All right, what is number two? So number two, what else does this guy do? He um, he figures out the migration. So has a table uh, ordered task. All right, um, so accepts NVAR with URL to assembly downloads it, interrogates it for migrations and ordered for migrations, which are just order tasks and then executes them. Then he has a table in the apps DB that is so he has a table in the apps database that uh, states which thing ran and when. Oh, Sage, Sage, uh, which migrations? Here, why don't we just say keeps a log in apps database that states which migration ran and when, uh, and then. Three, let's just do this. Uh, what does he do? Uh, runs the next migration in the sequence. And so it runs the next migration in the sequence and updates the database. The database. All right. Uh, runs next migration in the sequence and updates the database. All right. That's good. Um, you know, this is fun and all, but you know it's going to happen, right? I'm going to build this thing or get really far into it, and I'm going to um, dot .NET Migrator for one-offs and SQL without Entity Framework Fluent Migrations. Oh, that sounds fancy. Uh, I wonder if this is the same person who made Fluent... Uh, Fluent assertions and fluent validations and all that stuff, different people. Yeah, so this is kind of exactly what I was thinking, right? And this is actually exactly what I need because it's not just you can call whatever you want here, right? But I don't want to. I don't want to have a DSL. I don't want to have that. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Uh, I don't want a special database layer. I want to use Martin for this. Um, no. Uh, 
I mean, should I just use any framework migrations? I mean, I did that for web scheduler and I, I already have that. Let's see. Um, so source data migrations. Yeah, I think this required me to like scaffold the tables and stuff like that because I think it complained. Yeah, and you know, this was easy for this because Orleans is only like five tables or whatever for the different providers. And like, it was not a big deal, but it quickly got complicated when I, it quickly got complicated here. Um, yeah, so if we look at the initial, so like this is great, right? I just ran the SQL script, right? And it got tricky, got tricky around here, I think. Yeah, so this is where I added like custom indexes to make stuff better. Uh, and now here's where it got real tricky. So not the designer, but over here. Did I do it with that? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did write it using, I did the migration using the tooling. Um, yeah, it got, it got to be a real pain when I added like columns and stuff like that. Well, I guess it was easy, right? But still, it was not really what I had wanted to do necessarily. And it introduces yet another tool. And I don't want to scaffold these tables because this is how you do it, right? I don't know. I'm so torn because I could just run .NET code here and just run Martin right here. But I don't know. Anyway, what I did here when I packaged this stuff, um, it would build the binary and attach it as a thing, as a as an asset to the thing. So anyway, let's uh, let's see. Let's just go with this because should be simple. Famous last words. All right, let's go back to our design. Uh, runs the next migration, updates the database. So the more and more I think of this, I really don't want to build this, right? Um, let's go look at what, what this person with Erdstack and, and Erdstack said. Uh, here, uh, was this one? So this just handles like SQL scripts. Um, so let's see what they do here. So they lay out this process and they've got this all done for us. So so I guess this is what we're doing here, right? So we're so they run it here. So done it run. What is this? Oh, this is passing in files. Then depending on the situation, you could do a full dump or a patch. Yeah, you see, these generated files are a good starting point, but always evaluate whether your output matches your database schema and migration set. I have no idea if it's going to match because I don't know what it's supposed to look like, right? Um, and you also have guarantees because you know you don't you don't want to have any database drift, right? So you'll have those guarantees because you'll create your you'll run your migrations 100% of the time and then do your diffs. I don't know. Maybe this isn't the right design. So maybe this isn't the right way to do it. So kind of wanted these to 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 be versioned, right? I don't know. Let's let's have some fun. It's Saturday night. And we'll figure this out. All right, so so that's what's happening. Um, and oh, let's go back here. Yeah, so so we have this and runs the next migration in the sequence and updates the database. Um, okay, that's good. And then runs the next migration in the sequence and updates the database. So that's real good. And then we've got.
Yeah, the more and more I think about this, the more and more I really don't want to build this. I just want to focus on the app. I have, I really hate side quests, um, but they happen uh, a lot, right? So, yeah, they happen. Um, yeah, I don't want to do this, but I really don't want to do this. But I have to figure this out anyway. So anyway, this is the game plan. This is the game plan. Um, I still have to figure out migrations because I need it for for Infinity Flow. Um, so let's go here. Uh, speaking of side quests, uh, one of the side quests I did the other day was um, I made, since we're, we're actually using um, Aspire, we're going to start using Aspire here uh, for the .NET Aspire. Check it out. Um, we're going to start, we're going to convert our project to use that. Uh, it's going to help us out a lot. And so I actually, you know, I wanted the dailies because there's so much stuff going in. And I don't want to wait for a preview three. I, I want to get some of these features like full Kubernetes deployments and stuff like that just to simplify my life a lot a bit. Um, so what I was doing is I wrote a script that installs the daily builds. And I'm like, why am I building a script for this, right? Like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? And uh, so instead, I made a dev container feature. Yes, yes. I added a dev container feature here, .NET Aspire daily. And uh, it's the script. And... Uh, yeah, so let's, I've never actually used it in a real container before. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch my branch back to uh, the design branch I've been working in. Uh, force checkout and discard one file. And fetch. So git rebase main. All right, so. Uh, get rebase main. Oh, wait, do I have, uh, I think I was working on this with Simon. Uh, did he do any commits? Yeah, you see that? Uh, I was trying to get CI stuff to work in GitHub Actions. So, all right, so there's nothing going on here. So I could force push all I want. Um, so git push before I forget that I can actually change that. Um, yeah, so it shows one person's in the chat, but I have no idea. Uh, um, yeah, distractions. All right, so we're here. Let's go to um, our dev container, Jason, and let's add this dude in here. And rebuild container. Fingers crossed, first time actually doing it. I, I ran it in the CI and the test pass in the CI, so which actually builds a dev container using the CLI. Uh, yeah, here we go. Activating feature Aspire. Oh man, I want to do this again, but I want to like make a recording of it and drop it in the in the Discord, the or <clears throat> the Orleans Discord, and uh. I want to I want to just like do this and drop it in there. Yeah, we've got a Orleans Discord uh, that has uh, an Aspire channel because there is no Aspire Discord, um, so it's in there. Uh, and see now it's rebuilding the rest of the container. So I'm gonna put this over here, and. and I wish there was a cancel button. So I could just like do this again. What do you think that is? What is that red? 
Spawn, Docker, Compose, no process. Host server promise rejection was handled asynchronously. Uh, why is there a failure? Oh, is this like a Docker and Docker thing? Because I also use Docker and Docker. No, maybe not. I mean, but it works. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I don't know. So let's let's go ahead and do this. Let me make this video right quick. <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, .NET install tool extension. Oh, all right. So I need to have this .NET install tool extension. Um, dev container features. Oh, it's containers.dev slash features because I've done this a million times. .NET CLI. I think this is the one they're talking about. And it's not here, but it should be in the space image. I don't know. I don't know what's happening here, but. All right, so I'm going to start recording my video here. All right, here we go. All right. All right, so start recording. Three, two, one. Let's see. Show the log. Oh, it's completely cached, so it didn't do anything, right? Oh, wait, but it is going to do something because, no, it's not. It's completely cached. Completely cached. At least the layers were. Yeah, it totally skipped Aspire because it done did that. Maybe. I don't know. It's like each one of these extensions or each one of these dev container features does an apt update and app uh yeah, an app update and then installs this package and then RMs the list. So like ah like how many times are we downloading this list? And you know, I, I those lists are huge. Yeah, downloading Kube Cuddle, all this stuff. And I guess it makes sense, like the so dev container features are distributed via OCI. Uh, so uh, open container images, I think that's what the acronym stands for. If it doesn't, I'm surprised. Let me know in the comments, like, and subscribe. So um, then we, so it downloads the images, which Docker of course caches um, on your system. And then it, it creates a Docker file uh, and uh, executes it and applies the layer, I think, on top of your container. Well, not really applies the layer. It runs in the context of your container. And I think they copy it in by, I don't remember. I had to debug this a while ago. Um, but anyway, they the code from the extension is in the container image. It gets executed in the context of your container's uh, file system uh, and environment. And uh, then it's done, right? Then that stuff disappears. So. It might actually just be another container in some mount logic. Yeah, here, that. So yeah, it looks like they mount the files into this dev container feature in temp. And then they chmod, copy. OK, they copy the files over. So from temp to the container features. So this is, I think, the, this is source and destination. and why is this taking forever? Why? 120 seconds? What's happening there? I mean, yeah, I know Go does like st static uh, binaries and all that, but like for real, how big is that thing? What is happening here? Two minutes and I'm just, I'm just rambling. Like this is no bueno, no bueno.
Yeah, I don't know why this is, we're running on 200 seconds here. All right, time to switch it up music wise. I know you can't hear, but. All right. Uh... All right. Uh... All right. Why is this? I mean, see, and they like hide that stuff for you. Well, let me do this. Uh, no. All right, let's kill this thing. Uh, what machine am I on? Nope, wrong machine. Wait, am I on the wrong machine? No, I was on the right machine. Okay. Kill all nine dev container. Oh, it's that NPM thing, right? Oops, no. Let's see if we could just kill this. So up for 20, none of these things. So where's the build? Uh, Docker build, Docker compose. I think that's the pit. Nope. It's the last one, the pit. Yeah. No, the first one's the pit. Duh. Watch it like finish exactly. Yeah. Kill all, or kill nine sig term. Yep. Oh, no, 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 not retry. See, like, there's our. <sighs> yeah, and I messed up my video. Where's compose? I guess we're not there yet. Yeah, so. Why does that say January 8th? Entry point, yes, wrapper. What is it? Oh, Elastic, okay. I, I didn't even remember I had Elastic running here. Yeah, so same deal, look at that. But we're at 30 seconds. How big are these things? I think they're like 100 megs. All right, so let's do this. Uh, edit in SSH. Um, in this extension repository. Oh, for this, I can't read. All right. So let's do this again. And we're gonna do, all right, so snip. Let's not, let's not have another failure here. See, these are these side quests I'm talking about, right? These little things that take time, but yeah. All right, ready? Boom. Rebuild without cash. I'm going to regret this, aren't I? So it's downloading everything. These are all those extension images. So it generated its Docker Compose deal. It's opening the remote.
Where's the log? There we go. There's our spire daily. Please don't fail. Please don't fail. Please, please don't fail. Oh, maybe it will work. Please. Please, please, please. Literally downloading like the world. You know what takes a long time to compile? Git. Compiling Git from source takes a long time. It's installing Docker build X. Uh, it's a lot going on here. Like it's a lot of action happening, right? Okay, now it's at npm. Coop cuddle, please be fast. Please, be, oh, look at that helm, helm. Please be fast. Why are you going so slow? Where's this downloading from? I wonder if there's like the internet broken or something, like some CDN. Uh, oh man, this sucks. I just wanted to get a video of the Aspire stuff running. Yeah, all right, this is a distraction. <sighs> what was supposed to be a two second video. Anyway. Yeah, I'm just gonna stop recording this. Yeah, no. And so now I'm stuck without my container. <laughs> You know what, maybe it's this machine. I've noticed like when like when you have this uh system restart required thing, Docker tends to like suck. So Yeah. Uh you know, this is gonna really piss me off if I go to helm.sh and get started installing helm binary release i wonder if this is where it's downloading it from um let's see i'm the amd64 i mean yeah it's that machine the machine's on the network too on the same network but that's still, it's really slow, 400K a second. That's slow, but it's only 15 megs. So 314.0, yeah. I mean, this isn't even getting the latest one, but I guess that's because it's a pre-release. Yeah, 313.3 is the latest. So it is getting the latest one. I mean, that's bad. Maybe, Maybe this one. This would be slow. I mean, that's embarrassing. It's like real embarrassing. But that was the ARM one. Uh, AMD 64. I mean, it still did it in like 15 megs a second. So yeah, it's this machine. Um, let's do that. And I mean, that's still fast. Yeah, man, I would happily pay, I'd probably pay $100 a month to uh, the RIAA to get licensing, to play whatever I want on YouTube. Like, I just want background music that I like, that's not garbage. I mean, it's not like I'm trying to pay these artists an exposure or anything. Come on, faster, faster. 
and then I can restart this. It's still going. Like, that's disgusting. All right. So, uh, yeah. All right, let's just switch machines. Um, yeah, edit. What happened here? Oh, did I just, what just happened? I didn't know I could do that. I didn't know I could do this. I didn't know I could do this. I mean, but I have ports here. Oh, because. I don't know. what What is this? Wasn't this, like, where was this? Oh, really? Uh. Okay, well, at least there's port stuff on the same page. Did this used to be up here, though? I don't know. Um, so let's just open this in WSL. All right. Um, yeah. So where where is that forwarded porch or whatever? Is that like? Oh, I guess I could have gone here. Hide panel. But like where where did that even come from? Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, I think I fixed this. All right, so edit container. Oh, there's this problem with like Docker, Docker desktop on Windows at least, where Why did it just open this? Come on, man. All right, uh, let's try this again. Reopening container. This will be on the other machine. Uh, no. Yeah, so I think I fixed that. Yeah, all right, you see how fast that was? <laughs> Do you think we're still going to have this problem? So look at this. It's It's been an hour and 15 minutes, and all I've done is make some lines complain about uh, the state of music licensing in the world. And um, yeah. What is this thing doing? So while that's doing that, Uh, let's go to system. I mean, this thing just like opened the same thing. So close remote connection. Okay. It clearly said that it's like right here. Uh, open folder. All right, I have to open remote in WSL. Uh, connect to WSL. 
And do you think this will ever finish? Uh, infinity flow app system. All right, and open folder. Oh, it finally did that. Look at that. Error fetching, though. Uh, I don't need a spire, so not for the work we're doing today. Maybe it's like right here. And load the window. Which one disconnected? Uh, this is like a race. What is this one doing? I mean, I fully expect the right side to go faster because that one has like faster RAM and I think 24 cores. A Xeon 24 cores, it's only like five years old. But the one on the left is, I have no idea what, which, it's running in my VM cluster, my vSphere cluster. And I have no idea because I have like um, uh, like uh, the load balancing migration stuff. So it will move it where it needs to. See, like, look how fast that was though, right? It's doing all those extensions. Now it's doing the extensions. So did it actually install the Aspire stuff? So... Uh, what did that just complain about? Of course, of course. Wait, I wonder what it could be complaining about. No, I'm not messing with that now. Let's write some code, all right? YouTube is supposed to be a productivity tool for me. Let's just write some code. I do have to figure out this migration stuff though. Oh, here we go. Moment of truth, moment of truth. Do it, do it. So far, we're not looking good here. Yeah, it's not looking good, folks. All right, so while that's happening, we'll just work in the local environment. Uh, all right, so let's look at this. <sighs> so, We have, let's look at this. So, Martin Dump. What is Martin Dump? What is it? What is Martin Dump? So this is where they set up their migration stuff. No targets.
doesn't build anything but uses grade. But why though? Why not just do a Docker run? Just do a Docker run? Like why publish an image? Yeah, I don't know here. Um, what is Martin Dump? Is there a command line? Like, I don't know. When, how old is this? I'm checking to see if there's, there's no reference to it. Um, I don't know what that is. Martin Dump. I don't know. But that should finish though. Oh, it did finish. Look at that. Hey. How long did it take though? 135 seconds. And this is a setting of Postgres. Yeah, I, uh, which one is that? I don't know which remote this is. <laughs> they all look the same. Okay, this is my local. Yeah. I don't know which one this is. I guess I closed it. I wonder if it finished. How big is this image? I need to know now. Uh, this is on that machine. Two and a half gigs. <laughs> oh, this is all the stuff from the development of the feature. All right. Um, Downloading Razor telemetry package. What do you think? Razor language search. So this is done. How long did this take? What machine is this on? Okay, so this is on the remote machine. Um, so, and it didn't give me the workload problem that I had last time, which is good, right? So .NET lists, .NET new list. We should have Aspire. Yes. Yes, sir. So we got that now. Great. So, uh, yeah. So where is this? This is in the remote. So many of these, so many. So that's the remote one. This is the local and this is the other local. So I'm going to close. I'm going to work over here today. Okay, this is the one without Aspire. All right. <clears throat> and I have Postgres is running. What are you trying to tell me here? Oh, really? Why, why am I afraid to do this? All right, opening remote. All right, so we're good. Oh, it's going to download stuff again. Okay. Um. All right, so let's talk about, the, let's do these migrations, right? So we should be able to, 
uh, .NET build. Of course, of course there was .NET workload update. This doesn't have a spire, right? So why was there a problem there? Oh, I think this happened when I added that, but it's not here. I was to say that .NET, uh, so I don't need Minikube, right? Let's do this while I'm here in case I have to rebuild this thing. Uh, Minikube. I think you just say no, right? Uh, none. Okay. Yeah, I remembered correctly. None. And I'm in main. I don't want to be in main. I want to be in my designs branch. Uh, migrate changes, no. All right, yeah. So let's. Maybe that'll save me a few megs there. All right, all right. So, so this is this is the preview too. So this is the current released one. So we are on the release version here. So .NET build. No error. I wonder what that was all about. I mean, that like shouldn't happen because we are, shouldn't happen because we're using this .NET 181. So that's, that floats forward and it rolls forward rather. Why am I Postgres 15? I should actually just be 16, but that's, that's for later. So next time it'll just fix itself. All right. Determining projects to restore. All right, good. So, so .NET run, so that works. Uh, So I guess I gotta do, what does D mean? Is a database? All right, so why does this not look correct? Run, start, done it, run, run. I don't understand this completely, but like, where is the stuff? But I have the Oaken thing, so that's that's this deal. Come on, why does this shit always happen? <sighs> well, maybe it doesn't work with .NET Run. Uh, then. So this is just gonna run it. Yeah, okay. We literally had like other stuff going. Maybe this is trying to like be smart or something. So let's go to our PG admin. Let's create that database. Why is this taking so long? Whoa. 
me. That's kind of cool. You go like that, and then once you mouse up, it goes faster. Yeah, no crap. Taking longer than usual. Like, I wonder what prompted somebody to make that feature. Uh, what's the forward the port? No, it should just be like good to go, right? Yeah, because it's running on the host. Well, like for some reason, I fully expect it to host grass. I feel like this isn't working. All right. Uh, do I have multiple Postgres servers? <laughs> Come on, no layups, no layups around here, folks. Uh, okay, so I could just do Docker compose ls, Docker compose project system uh no docker compose um start right uh what did they call this thing what is this thing called and i should just be able to run uh help start help i think you can specify the service there yeah so what is this guy called db oh uh I mean, that can't be right. Oh, I guess I have to like build. Yeah, no. Uh, come on. Uh, I don't need to rebuild the container. So I think I just need to reopen in WSL and then open it again. Of course, I opened up the wrong one. Thank you. <sighs> Move that there. So we're there and we're forwarding ports already. So. So I'm just gonna like I don't I don't know why this is such a problem here, but All right. So doc or C D S R C Docker run. dot net <coughs> need to get some of a drink yeah there's no layups like nothing is ever ever easy like i love computers but i sparkling ice 
the only other flavors are the lemonade ones. The rest are like weird. So I got kiwi strawberry. Well, I guess that's a good one. That's not a lemonade one. That's uh this one. You can't really see it, but if I hold it up here, you'll be able to. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Let's so let's let's go to the docs. Let's forget about this one. Let's go to. Um, pre generating types, configure document storage. I mean, I have this oaked in extensions. I mean, I saw this last night. Okay, Martin Dump. So this is exactly what I've been doing. At the root of your code base. But like what? Let's see what Martin shirt does. But like what is Martin though? Once you have that file, some sample usages are shown shown below. You know what? Let's give it a shot, man. These folks aren't the best at writing docs, but they sure know how to write some cool stuff. So, um, uh, what is this thing called? Uh, system. You know, I feel like I'm missing something here. Oh. Uh, or I forget. I feel like this is it, right? Watch be the other one. No layups. Yeah, that's the one. 560 megs. Wow, look at that. All right, um, so that's in a different place. So let's go to, what do you think this will do? Oops. Percent. What is this, like what, what? Did we get screwed by shell expansion? Yeah, man, that doesn't work the way it's supposed to be. Uh, see, like there's directory dot build dot props in lowercase. Like, what's what is happening here? Oh, because that was shell expanded. Yeah, so this just did. Ugh, I can't do that. Uh, here. So that's interesting. So if I go, let's open up another, another terminal. So if I. So if I go here and I just run this, uh, so that's .NET, so it went there. So if I do this, 
it will pass help to the command line. But like, we've got these guys. I don't understand. I just don't understand. Don't understand. Don't understand. So does it only work when we're out here? I don't get it. Uh, Martin assert. I mean, I don't know what would cause. Oh, there's no hyphen. Ah, oh, yeah. So oh, that's another thing. Like, all these standards get broken. Like, I get it. Help is like a verb, but yeah, okay. Uh, so dumps the entire DDL for the configured Martin database. Uh, oh, we want to do. Let's figure out. We have to do code gen also. So code gen. This is all the code that gets done. So let's see pre-generating types. Code gen write. Yeah, I don't like Doja Cat, man. All right, so. So this is the code that gets generated, and this is like a shitload of code, right? But I understand why they do it. Right? It makes a lot of sense. Can you imagine like having to write all this manually? Like, I would probably get a new job. All right, so enough uh, enough there. So here's that projector projection we made. So this is our the operation here, right? I wonder what this gets compiled down to. Well, I guess this gets plugged into it. Anyway, so now we've generated this code, right? So the recommendation here is not to commit this to source control, but I feel like that's not wise. Their argument was their argument was that it can get out of sync and cause problems. Uh I mean I get that, but I think like as part of a build step, you can assert that it's correct. Like by committing this and here let me show you what i'm talking about so so if like you commit if you if i'm going to stage all if i stage all these and then i run the tool again i should have nothing unstaged right uh should have nothing no changes right and those numbers at the end the suffixes those are generated by the hash of the file i think or the type i don't remember but that's a hash yeah no changes oh come on Seriously? I just like, did this twice. Where's the change? No way. Oh, come on. Come on. Huh. So that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Like, do I get a different one? It's real messed up. That's not fair. Not fair. 
it's correct now. Look at that. Oh, man. This is like rolling the dice. Uh... Uh, posting a message in their Discord. It's not a repeatable operation, uh, only in the, which ones are this? This is in the Wolverine handlers. Um, all right, so, that's actually kind of funny. Like sometimes you gotta just laugh at like the things that happen to you. All right, so that idea is out. I guess that's why you. Sh all right, so all right, so let's see what these database things look like. Let's see how is this? How do they write this? So. What, is, what does that mean? Describe running application. Oh, I got an extra one. All right, so it dumps a graph. Oh, this is actually pretty cool. Why is this assembly there twice, though? All right, that's actually cool. Oh, as you iterate stuff, it's going to build the dynamic code, right? Cool. All right, uh, failure rules. Cool, these are the retry values. So here are the routes. All right. About. I configuration. Reference assemblies. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, um, enough of that. So apply, assert, dump, and patch. I wonder why there's two. Well, I wonder why dump and patch, right? But I guess one is when you need to dump it when you already have a database. Can I pass like help to it? All right, 
So Martin Dump. See, that one takes a dash dash help, like for serious stuff. Or did it do it because there was an error? Yeah, it did it because there was an error. Okie dokie. By feature, transactional script, database, interactive environment. Why are there two, though? Let's see what it does first. I still don't get it, like, to the file. All right. Uh, I mean, it's still. A specific database from this list, so. Why is Wolverine envelope storage twice? <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's messed up, dude. So when you dump it, it creates the database. So when you dump it, it creates the database, but when the app runs, it doesn't. None of these things instill more confidence in me, but it works. And I guess I can like fix it, right? All right, so that's the entire one. And then if we, so if that was Martin. So now I have to do Wolverine envelope storage. Uh, so I guess let's do, uh, new, let's delete dump and let's do, uh, Wolverine folder, Wolverine or Wolverine and then yeah, because these are different databases. So I think we're just applying it to the right one. This like this doesn't match, I don't think. We shall see. Uh so let's just do this. Let's just be easy, right? Um Right, because these are different things. So that's there. And now let's do Martin. See if there's a difference in where it's trying to install this to. 
or run this. All right, so we have create schema. Okay, so these are all designed to be in, these follow the configuration at runtime. So these are just one. Yeah, so uh, move. Let's do this. Uh, so these go away. Migrations. So we're going to do um, let's see what these scripts look like. So migrations. So this is um, Martin initial. Uh, and then, oh, but that's that's actually Wolverine, Wolverine envelope storage. And that's actually got to be number two, but, you know, who's counting? Uh, yeah, let's do that one first. And then we'll do the first one. It's going to be script two. And then this is going to be Martin because it's the Martin generation stuff. All right, so we've got these dudes over here. So, all right. So that's our initial dump. Let's make a change and see what this does. So if this is the initial. Right, and so we should have nothing here, right? If if we do so DB patch. But what what is it? What is Martin Patch and DB Patch? Is that why we're getting two? Yeah, I'm trying to like look. So that's I see Martin Patch. Let's let's. Let's look and see what happens here. Uh, so we've been using Martin Patch. So dump. I bet they're the same thing. And that would explain why we have two. They probably like register themselves as like providers for this stuff. Yeah, and they did the same thing. No. Oh, it's cold. I just got like cold in here. Hey, Google, set the thermostat to 75. All right. So I think that this is kind of sufficient okay, for now. Setting upstairs like, 75 degrees. If we then make a change. Yeah, I... Uh, my concern, here's my concern. My concern is that running this tool directly from a blank slate in multiple environments could introduce drift, I guess, maybe. 
if they like change implementation under the hood. Um, but I, I hope there's tests. I don't know. All right. I am going to not do this, right? I'm just like not going to do this right now. I want to, I want to build cool shit. I don't want to, I don't want to do migrations anymore. Like this was, this was not a pleasurable experience for me right now. So all right, I'm going to revert these and I'm just going to, just going to go back to, yeah, what a waste of two hours. All right, I'm going to kill this stream and I'm just going to start a new one under the other playlist uh, to organize this here.